What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. We already kicked off. We kicked off. I didn't think it was going to fill up that quickly. I apologize. So we are underway. 2021 fantasy foosball mock draft, but realistically, it's a best ball draft. For those of y'all that have no idea what best ball is, it's fantastic. And underdog does it the most fantastic. So you have the most fantastic platform doing the most fantastic types of drafts. Highly recommend you download the Underdog Fantasy app. Best out, goat out. Link will be down below. Here's what we're doing. We're doing a 2021 mock draft. And it's got all the rookies in here. And it's got everything with all the players and situations. We've got free agency buzzing around. And we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. So th these will continue to evolve as we go on and we do these weekly. You know, we'll get more player breakdowns. We'll see where players settle. See new places, new faces, old places, new spaces, erases. Jason Stamp Sternberger. He fucking stinks, that guy, huh? All right. Well, if you're new, by the way, my name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big Dog's got to eat. Fantasy football. And uh, we're on the underdog fantasy platform where we're doing this draft and C-Mac, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry go off the board. First, I'm at the 108. This is the 12-team league. This is half PPR. This is a one-quarterback draft. <clears throat> Someone was yelling at me in the comments last week when I did this draft that, uh, that I should stop doing super flex drafts. And to that, I say, this isn't a fucking super flex draft. This is a one-quarterback draft. What are you talking about? Crazy. You guys are crazy out here. Everybody's bullying me and shit. Don't need that in my life. Let me move you over here. All right, so here's what's good. 108, best ball draft. All the running backs go off the board. So you've got C-Mac, Cook, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, Zika, Elliott, Jonathan Taylor. Okay, so even off a shitty year, we will get zero discount, zero premium on running backs. But we're going to go, ooh, 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 don't be playing me right there. We're going to go with Nicholas Chubb, Mr. Chubby, at the 108. Absolutely love him as a mid first round pick this upcoming year. Showed just how good he was last year. It's Cleveland Browns team. Unbelievable turn of events there. They had pieces to their offensive line. They graded out as the number one overall run blocking O line in the NFL last year per PFF. One swing, one offseason swing, a couple pieces, a couple moves, a couple little shake and bakes here and there. Before you know it, they're an elite run blocking line. And it shows with Nick Chubb. Ripping off five point fucking six yards per carry every time he touches the ball. Doesn't hurt. This is a run first team as well. They do a lot of play action. They keep the defense on their toes. Things get tricky. So we saw Devontae Adams go off the board at 110. We have Kelsey at 111. So we've got the first of their kind. The first of their species, wide receiver one and tight end one going off the board there. So for those of y'all that are new, best ball is basically just taking the draft. All you do is draft. Okay. You don't do any in season movement which is why these are really fun because you get to kind of keep up with the trends and the adps and the and the different things going on throughout the offseason seeing how players swing up and down the draft boards without av actually having to do you know without having to be up at 3 a.m on tuesday nights during the season figuring out the waiver wire shit figuring out your trade situation figuring out if you got any fab left you know all the shitty parts of the season that some of you guys love for whatever reason you don't have to do here you just draft okay it's the funnest part of fantasy in my opinion you just draft, and it starts the best players at each position every single week. Come back, collect your monies afterwards. Ooh, Eckler up at the 2-2. Interesting. That's probably the highest I've seen him. Aaron Jones at the 2-3. He just got word that he will not be franchise tagged. Where does Aaron Jones go? Uh, I do think they try to re-sign Honestly, I think, I think it's like 50-50 that they re-sign him. I really wouldn't be surprised if he ends up back in Green Bay. We are on the clock. Still some good wide receivers on the board. There's some great or great wide receiver, still some good running backs, I should say. Definitely not looking to take quarterbacks. Again, we only start one of them. Gibson, Dobbins, James Robinson, Miles Sanders. So for me, uh, I like Dobbins here, man. I, I still think he's got probably one of the most talented running backs in the NFL at this point. And now with Mark Ingram out, he's going to be that feature back there. Why do I not like Gibson a little bit better? I mean, the, the Washington offensive line is still trash. And I still think J.D. McKissick, y'all got to understand, like, J.D. McKissick did not luck his way into that role. He didn't just happen to be there. J.D. McKissick was a wide receiver in college. He had a, he had a season high of 103 catches one year in college. 
His other years were like 80 catches, 65, 75 catches. He's not just a guy who just happened to fall into a pass catching role like James White. Jaden McKissick is a plus ROI guy in the receiving game. And I don't think that really changes. I do think Gibson will get more work this year, obviously, than he did last year. But I still think I like Dobbins more in, in the backfield of Baltimore. Good offensive line. Just a good team all around. Uh, so I take him over Antonio Gibson. But we see this trend, man. So many running backs off the board. So we had Adams from the 110 to the 2-1. We had no running backs. And then it's right back to six running backs off the rip again. Eckler to 2-2. Jones, Swift, Dobbins, Gibson, Mixon, Kittle at the 2-8. Here's the thing about the best ball draft. As I said, you draft a large team, right? So you're only drafting the flex players. Thank God you do no kickers, no defense, which is also another reason why I fucking love this platform. You don't do any of that shit. And what you do, what you do do, what you do do, shout out to your butthole. I apologize. I can't be doing shit like that. Again, no pun intended. What you do is you draft a big team, 18 roster spots, 18 positions, big Big, 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 big. So like six running backs, seven wide receivers, and it automatically starts the best players at each one, okay? So when you're looking at the tight end and the quarterback position, you're only starting one of those guys. You're starting two running backs, three wide receivers. So rather than kind of pay up for the upper echelon guys, unless they're falling out of value, uh, you know, just mix in a few mediocre ones. And one of them will probably have a good week and you only need to fill one spot there. So that's usually where I'm going out with like Darren Waller, the 211, Killer Colton, Killer Colton, you got to be the most fraudulent killer of all time, taking Darren Waller up at the 211. That's ridiculous. That's just – sometimes I feel like when I'm drafting with y'all, you do you do things like that just for the content. I, can't, I don't blame you. Like, I would enjoy watching me get fucking super angry about Darren Waller going before Justin Jefferson, going before James Robinson, going – just, just – Darren Waller, you missed the train with him last year. He's he just he, Kittle was going off the board at like the three seven last year. That's where Kelsey was going off the board. Now we want to take Darren Waller around before that. It's egregious. It's egregious that I'd allow that to happen in my fucking industry. Calvin Ridley at the three two. James Robinson at the three one. Uh, again, I try to hit the running backs early and often because once you hit like right here, once you hit the Javante Williams ish tier, like in this area. Things get super dicey, and uh, that's where wide receivers explode. So you want to get your running backs early. You want to get them off, and same sentiment we've been preaching for about two years now. And I'll sit on tight ends because I don't think anyone is really in a position to have a monster year there where they warrant 211-type draft capital. It's out of control. Calvin Ridley, DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown at 3-2, 3-3, through 4 You love to see that. Just a lot of wide receiver depth here, man. A lot of wide receiver depth here, as there typically is in fantasy football, because none of them actually fucking matter. You know? You know? Like, all oh, what's the drop-off between wide receivers 14 and, and 27? It's like fucking 1.2 points per game. I'm sorry. The, the, like, I'm antsy right now because the weather right now in New York, it, hits, it hit the 60 mark for the first time in about five months, and it helps me end my depression. So we're going out. We're going hard. We're going heavy on, uh, on on the Margs tonight. We got we got dinner plans. We got Taco Tuesday plans. I'm filming this on Tuesday night. You're seeing it Thursday. So by the time I start talking about shit, uh, most of it's probably irrelevant. And we're going to talk tomorrow on Fade the Public about free agency landing spots and predictions for that, where we go a lot more in depth. Let's see here. Uh, Miles Sanders, Michael Thomas, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. I got to start pl- putting players in the queue. So Allen Robinson got franchise tagged. So we don't want a part of that. He could still get traded, which I think is an interesting uh, proposition. You know, I have no Najee Harris because usually he goes off the board at like the fucking 3-1 or 3-2. So we're actually going to take, we're, we're going to do a little uh, Najee Harris here. I have no idea where he's going to end up. I do think he's the first running back off the board. But even if he's not the first running back off the board, I think like him, ETN, and, and Javante Williams will kind of be within like 20 to 25 picks of each other. Late first round to mid, late second round. So I'm not too concerned with the draft capital, even if he's not the first one off the board. Hopefully he finds a team that really likes him and wants to use him as a starter off the Rizip. The Rizip? Tizales. I'll choose Tails, please. Yeah, so uh, where are we going tonight? We're going, I, I helped two friends move last week from their apartment, RIP. They were like some of my first friends I made in this apartment, this this unit, this building, and uh, helped them move to their new place downtown. 
And they're like, hey, we want to buy you dinner for helping us move because I was doing all the fucking heavy lifting over here. You know how it, you know how it is what it be. I'm just getting a little prick, to be honest. But we're going to this place, Ofrenda, Ofrenda downtown, which is one of my favorite brunch spots in the whole world. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to attack Taco Tuesday like I attack these mock drafts. I'm going be, I'm to be fucking picking apart people's foods and be like, that, that shit right there, value bite, value bite. The corner piece, fucking sleeper bite. Know what I'm saying? What else do we got here? Okay, so the first quarterback went off the board. Patrick Mahomes at the 312. A little bit early for me, only because I've been doing this. Is This is why I, I get I get in. I heavily invest into underdog. As you can see, my whopping $162 balance. All of these drafts, I should preclude with all of these drafts, are money drafts. Uh, they're not throwing away money. Like You're not just putting money into draft. This is obviously a league. So you come back and the, first, the top three spots get paid. They win. So you're competing. And because there's money on the line, obviously people are playing seriously and they're drafting seriously. So you're going to get the most accurate ADP and the most accurate drafts via underdog. Okay. So grab the link down below, download the app, Google, iOS, whatever you got. When you're in there, when you're depositing 10 bucks, they've got a little spot where you can put the referral code or the promo code or whatever, throw BDGE in there. And uh, that'll let them know that you sent me, that you didn't send me. I sent you. If so, facto, I'm your boss. Uh, yeah, that would that would help the brand out tremendously. So now we have three running backs off the rip, and this is why we kind of wait on wide receivers. We still got a lot of good ones left. We like all these guys, man. I can't believe Julio's just still getting disrespect. We're going to take Terry, though. I fucking love Terry. This is just out of respect. The the red the, the Washington football team, they might go with a wide receiver first round. I could see that happening. I could see them signing like a, a Curtis Samuel. I could see them taking a Rashad Bateman with that mid-first round pick. Something like that, which will obviously take a little bit off the plate of Terry, but he's good enough to ball the fuck out regardless. So I'm a fan of, uh, oh, Brody NYC. I wonder if that's Matt Brody. If it is Matt Brody and you watch his bike, shout out to you. I thought you were throwing some fucking potties at your apartment in Brooklyn over the winter. You never did that. Unless you just didn't invite me, which I wouldn't blame you. All right, Alan, see what you're working with. T. Higgins, good pick. See, the middle rounds are just beautiful here. Just fucking beautiful for wide receivers. That's why we stack up the running backs early. Let's see. Uh, the other thing I think I was saying about quarterbacks is like, since we're all signed up now, but I've been signed up for a while, I've been doing some of these drafts and I see the trends. Of these quarterbacks go really late. And I think there's that tier of Josh Allen, Kyle, Kyle, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, like Dak, Deshaun Watson. Uh, maybe even Justin Herbert that are like a very high upside second tier, but they're going four rounds after Patrick Mahomes, which is crazy to me. Um, so I'll wait on these quarterbacks and I'll get whatever of the last of those guys falls to like the sixth, seventh, eighth round. And that'll pretty much be my quarterback position, though. I love Jalen Hurts is probably the best value pick right now. And I've said this in almost every video. So eventually his ADP is going to start rising. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mahomes off the board. So Jalen Hurts right now is a quarterback 10 off the board in these drafts, and it's just too damn low. It's too damn low. It's low like my self-esteem. I'm just kidding you. I know, like, I listen, I'm not depressed. I use a lot of self-depreciating humor, and I'm working on it. Um, things are good. Life's good. Life's good in Big Dog Nation. Big Dog Nation. We need a theme song or some shit. I need someone to make like a theme. Someone did that for Bunk Bed Breakdowns. It's like a theme rap song or some shit. I remember. Pretty sure there was like shots taken at me though in it. So I was like, what the fuck is this? But also pretty catchy. Who the fuck is this? Taking Josh Allen with the 516. All right. Thielen. Okay. Here's, here's, here's a few things. Okay. So we have Godwin who got franchised. They're going to bring that whole team back. Big bike in Tampa Bay. Godwin, I, I really like this spot here for Godwin 4 9. I think he's yeah, I think he's in for a big bounce back here. ETN at 4 10. I think ETN one. There's two things I need to see from ETN. Where he actually lands and his weight. If he if he comes in like sub 200, that's a big problem. And he's he, not even close to a fourth round pick. If he comes in over 200, if he comes in at like two, 208, 210 or something, and he gets drafted somewhere where we know they're going to use him right, he's going to fly up boards. But he's a little risky right now for me in the fourth round of these drafts. 
Adam Thielen is probably going to be one of my most avoided players this year. As someone who loved him going into last year, I think I think you, you squeezed out all the juice that we fucking had out of the Adam Thielen lime for the margarita that was your fantasy team, and I think uh, I think that's done with. I don't think Adam Thielen is a good pick this year. Justin Jefferson is the fucking clear future of that passing offense, and I don't want the secondary piece of a passing offense that's going to start running through somebody else and is not very pass heavy to begin with. Okay. So they've showed their cards there and it's Jefferson as the one, the alpha Thielen might get involved like near the red zone, but like he's not a fourth round pick to me anymore. I think we saw mostly over the second half of the year, he was very touchdown dependent. Like, yeah, he'd still be putting up good fantasy numbers, but it was like four for, for 36 and two touchdowns. Great. But like, I'm not counting on that to continue happening. So it's uh, there's a wide, wide gap between Jefferson and Adam Thielen, and Thielen's a guy that I probably won't be touching unless he falls to like the late fifth, probably more so sixth roundish area. Woods with Stafford, we like that. Josh Allen, there you go, the five one, and there's still going to be like not a run of quarterbacks here. So it seems to me, based on what I've seen um in these drafts so far, it's like Mahomes is the tier one guy. Josh Allen is like the clear tier two at quarterback, almost by himself. I've seen him go a lot earlier than most of the other quarterbacks. Oh, I'm on the board. Water, water. Claypool, Galladay, you love that. Javante Williams still on the board, huh? I kind of like him. Cooper Cup, Ayuk, Sutton. I'm actually going to grab some Cup because I don't have a lot of a lot of him. But I think, again, Stafford just elevates that entire receiving game. And Cup at the 5'8", I'm cool with that. Josh Reynolds is out of there. Uh, Gerald Everett's out of there. Not that either of those really fucking make any sort of impact on Cooper Cup. But I'm just, you know, saying shit to pretend like I'm smart. You know what I might do going forward? I might like add a twist to every one of these mock drafts where I just do a different accent in each one. I could do a Boston one for the next one. I do like an Australian one and then a London one and then a Jamaican one. You know what I'm saying? And each one I do a a full one like that. How y'all feel about that? I think last year I had an idea where I would take a different drug before each one. That would be pretty fucking lit. That would have been fun. So Cooper Cup, 5'8", Cortland Sutton, 5'9", Juju at 5'10". Absolutely hate that. Hate Juju. He'll be one of my most avoided players this year, too. I wonder where he lands. Like, Green Bay is the only place where his value can go up. Um, I don't hate him in Miami, either, because they're going to be running, like, not really a downfield offense. And Tua, obviously, is way more accurate over the short part of the field. So that kind of lends itself to Juju. Las Vegas, I would hate. Either of the New York teams, I would hate. So he'll be interesting to see where he lands and what kind of money he he gets because I just don't think he has that alpha gene in him. Cortland Sutton, absolute love. He's been, he's been someone I've been yelling about in each of the last two videos, but that's because I get him at the end of the sixth or the seventh round, and uh, now we're seeing his value sort of recalibrate itself into the middle of the fifth round. Good job, big dogs. What else we got here? So this is where I might start looking at a quarterback uh, because if I don't grab, grab him at 6'5", I risk the... Chance of not getting one down at the 7 8. I think we're going to risk it because there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven quarterbacks that I like as a tier one guy or tier two, I should say. Running backs. I think Chase Edmonds upside makes a lot of sense in this round. Um, So if he falls to me, I might grab him. But we still need some wide receivers because, again, you start three wide receivers and you only start two running backs, and the software automatically fills that shit for you. So um, you need a little bit more volume at the wide receiver position because there's more starters there. So I might not want to go so running back heavy, but it does give you the flexibility of just going with a bunch of high wide receivers or high upside wide receivers later in the draft, which probably are high receivers as well. Like Antonio Brown's probably high right now. Who's who's the most most likely to be high when I draft them? Antonio Brown for sure. Uh, Cole Beasley definitely stays high. You ever heard it like his music? He puts out some weird ass like R and B rap music. I'm just like Cole, leave that shit to J Cole. Let's see. Lamar Jackson goes off the board. We're going to see a quarterback run between now and my next pick, and I'm going to be very sad about it. All right, Chase. Let's see. Oh, 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 a different Chase. Oh, uh, ah, man. Ayuk is still on the board. Tyler Boyd with Joe Burrow coming bike. Fuck. Fudge, guys. Fudge. Do I go with Chase? Are there any other running backs I even like down here? Nah, I'm probably going to go with Chase. I just think the if Kenyon Drake is gone, like Chase's upside is, is pretty fucking high for a six-round pick. So I will uh, I will roll the die on Mr. Chase. We'll chase the upside. 
Uh, where where was I? Oh, Jamar Chase. So Jamar Chase at the six four, in my opinion, is pretty fucking early. I get that over the last couple of years we've had some nice rookie wide receivers, and maybe that shouldn't scare us away. But I still think more often than not, like we're not gonna have that many nine hundred yard rookie wide receivers, and it's still a very big gamble this early in the drafts. Like more often than not, the rookie wide receivers are not going to break out. We have no idea where they're getting drafted to. So Jamar Chase is most likely going to, you know, we could use common sense in these things, which is why I like drafting this early in the off season when it comes to best ball, because you can get some value, get some advantage when it comes to the rookies. Like we can play this shit out. I think Jamar Chase going to Philadelphia makes sense at number six. What that means is, you know, what is Jamar Chase's fantasy upside in Philadelphia there? Like, I would much rather have Ayuk. I would much rather have uh, Chase Edmonds, as I picked. I would much rather have a lot of the guys going around the same area because Jamar Chase will go and play with Jalen Hurts. Now, Jalen Hurts, regardless of how effective he can be on the ground, this is going to be a very run. It's going to be similar to when, like, people are like, oh, Baltimore is the most run-heavy offense in the league. It's like, of course, because their quarterback's running the ball 15, 20 times. So, really, if the running backs take 20 carries a game, that's enough to get that done. That will probably be the situation in Philadelphia where Hurts is going to run the ball 10 to 15 times, Miles Sanders 15 times, whatever, scraps left over for the chumps in that backfield. And before you know it, they're one of the most run-heavy offenses. Jalen Hurts is not going to be one of the most accurate quarterbacks. So if you have a less volume, a lower volume passing offense, you need efficiency from the wide receivers. He's a rookie. They have Jalen Rager there. Like, I don't know. Chase in the, in the sixth round is a little too high for me in redraft, even if he is a fantastic prospect. You feel me? Do you feel the me? Do you feel me? Okay, so we've had a little wide receiver run. Ayuk, Lockett. We had a quarterback run of Prescott and Herbert. Ayuk, Lockett, Tyler Boyd, TJ Hawkinson. I'm not up for another six or so picks. Let me move myself over so you can see my team. We have the four running backs, Nick Chubb, Dobbins, Najee Harris, Chase Edmonds, Terry McLaurin, Cooper Cup. So we'll probably go a little bit more wide receiver heavy if I don't land a quarterback here. I think we can see the board as well. Again, y'all, if you have not drafted on Underdog, you're absolutely missing out because this is so smooth. The app, they have the app. The app is where you guys will draft. I only do it on the desktop, which works fine, but I only do it because I have to screen share with y'all. But the app is flawless. It's beautiful. It's well-designed. Shout out to David over there at the Underdog team. Um, beautifully, beautifully, beautifully done. So again, the link will be right down below in the description. It'll be the first thing in the comments pinned for you to download it, no matter what kind of phone you're using, iOS or or Android or whatever. And if you want to draft with us, obviously, make sure that you throw 10 bucks in there and use the promo code BDGE when you do so. I usually shoot these out to either my uh, the Discord first, the Big Dogs Discord, and then our text community. Both will be linked down below if you want more information on that and how to get into the actual drafts with us. Otherwise, you know, there are other drafts outside of Big Dogs obviously going on on Underdog Fantasy. Okay, so we have, ooh, okay, there's the run of quarterbacks. Who do we have left? Uh, I would have loved Deshaun Watson at 7 2 just feels like a ridiculous value. I really hope Jalen Hurst falls to me at the 7 8 here. Aaron Rodgers, not a bad consolation prize. Brody. Brody, he's going to take Jalen Hurts. I know. Oh, no, he already has a quarterback. Bet, 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 bet. Debo. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Jalen Hurts or Aaron Rodgers. Actually, this feels kind of. That's a good problem to have. Uh, do I have any stacks right now? I tend to like to stack a few players or teams or whatever if the opportunity presents itself. Because this is four point per passing touchdown, I think I'm more likely to go with Jalen Hurts. If it was six point per passing touchdown, obviously I go with Aaron Rodgers because the guy uh, throws a lot of touchdowns. He'll definitely going to come down from where he was last year. It was a ridiculous, ridiculous number that he threw up last year, like career highs all across the fucking board. Ain't going to happen again. Um, so Hurts there, perfectly fine with that. But I will say this week in and week out until y'all put him into the sixth round of one quarterback leagues. Best value quarterback in the draft. Running backs are ugly. Glad, glad I got mine. Chanel, Brandon Cooks. I, you know what? It's not as deep as last year. It's really not as deep as those middle rounds of, uh, of last year when it came to wide receivers. Tight ends. 
Let's see. Dallas Goddard's kind of nice because Ertz should be gone. And I could stack that with Jalen Hurts. There's a pass catcher I could stack that as a potential being the number one there. Don't hate that. Irv Smith obviously should shoot up draft boards with Kyle Rudolph. Gone. Jonah Smith did not get the franchise tag. I'm sorry. I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I keep like ending it with weird fucking... Bah! You know? You know? You know? Faith fail, short Z's time. There goes Aaron Rodgers. And then there realistically like shouldn't be a quarterback taken for a long time. Okay. I bet you see money fucking takes quarterback right now. That's how these things usually work. Okay. Okay. Oh man. See, Damian Harris is another nice upside running back that I feel like I wish I didn't take Chase now. Because Harris is a good pick here. And I could add another nice wide receiver three. Damn. I like Damian. Who do we take at wide receiver? Man, people are... Okay, LaVisca goes off the board. Brandon Cooks is a tough one to fucking dive into right now. I, I, I have him on a few of my best ball teams. Jerry Judy, Jarvis Landry. Mm, I'll tell you what, wide receiver dried out real quick. Real quick. I'm going to take Jerry Judy, actually. I'm going to take Judy. Finish strong. Really, really solid all-around rookie year. Some drops. Some drops. It's fine. But uh, tons of air yards. 850 yards as a, as a rookie is a really, really solid number. We could boost that up to 1,000 yards this year. We're looking at a nice return in the eighth round. LaVisca is like a tough, a tough, a tough evaluation for me. I got to grab water. I'll be right back. Uh, Jerry Judy, yep, great guy. Dallas Goddard, great guy. Devonta Smith, not a guy I'm willing to take that early. Brandon Cooks. So Brandon Cooks' situation is a little tricky because... We don't know what's going to go happen with Will Fuller. We don't know what's going to happen to Deshaun Watson. The upside of Brandon Cooks is being the number one for Deshaun Watson if Will Fuller leaves and Deshaun Watson stays. The downside is Watson's gone and Brandon Cooks is the number one for fucking Mitch Trubisky or something like that. Now that is something I might not be interested in. So I think the risk outweighs the reward. Cooks is a guy who's put up like 1,000 yards for 42 straight seasons, even though he's like 22. Really impressive stuff. What we got here? What we got here? All right, let's start looking at... Uh, I should have went with fucking Goddard, to be honest. Kyle Pitts, nah. Hunter Henry just avoided the franchise tag. So the teams I see most likely to grab a tight end this year in free agency would be Jacksonville for sure. Uh, New England for sure. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if I generally see Indianapolis like going out of their way to grab a tight end in the offseason, but I, Zach Ertz would make sense because he would reunite with, obviously, Wentz and Frank Reich. So I don't know if they'll go out of their way to try to sign someone to a contract, but Ertz moving would make sense to Indy. What other teams? I could see Cincinnati getting a tight end. Um, I feel like they've drafted and signed like four tight ends in the last two years, and they're all just like the most mediocre of all time. Who else? The Jets could do something. Uh, that really might be it. Honestly, the Chiefs should just grab another another tight end and go like a hybrid of their offense plus the Patriots when it was Gronk and Aaron Hernandez, the GOAT. That'd be sick. Imagine Travis Kelsey and like Jonu Smith just running a muck on the field with Mahomes throwing them the ball. Them two, Tyree Kill. They need a wide receiver too. Their their wide receivers are trash outside of Tyreek. Let's see. Okay, see, this is like Damian Harris, two picks before Pollard. Like, what is Pollard gonna do when Zeke if Zeke is there? Because he is fucking there. He's not going anywhere. 
I feel like Irv Smith should not be falling this low. Super, super athletic and now has the whole role to himself. Mike Kosicki, eh, questionable. I'm not, I don't know how confident I am in investing in Miami pass catchers with Tua there. I think they definitely add something. Via, they might have, add multiple. Oh, nice pick with fucking Goatman. They might add most, multiple pieces to this offensive um, this offensive unit here in Miami. They could add, they could add a pass catching running back like Aaron Jones. I, I think the only two spots I see him landing are basically San Fran or Miami, if not back in Green Bay, which I think is, if not probable, the most likely scenario. Uh, they might add a, a wide receiver at that 18th pick. Could be Bateman. It could be Waddle. It could be like one of those guys. And then we are bike on the clock. And as I'm saying that, I'm like, eh, I kind of like Devonta Parker. Oh, uh, God, I hate all these guys. I don't hate Denzel Mims, but that's like, this is too early, I think, to grab him. Michael Gallup with Dak back, but he was terrible with Dak there. Man, things are ugly. I might just grab a tight end right now because he's going to run out on me. Hunter Henry, where are you going to sign, bro? We're going to go with Kasicki, actually. I, I hate that pick so much. I don't know why I did that. I don't even like Kasicki. Don't like the the spot he's in. I like Irv Smith better. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? What is he doing? I tell you what, these drafts are long. These drafts are long. I don't have it in me. I'm just I'm just gonna fucking pass away soon. <laughs> you know who I really like in the in the uh who I really like in the fantasy space that if you guys don't follow you should is peter howard p-a howdy p-a-h-o-w-d-y that's his twitter name kind of think i kind of want him to like be on the big dogs team to be honest he's like this this british dude who's like really into like spreadsheets and shit like really analytical when it comes to the prospects but he's got like this this weird swag about him where he's just like i feel like he's like my spirit animal if i was older and like i Nah, it's going to sound so bad, actually. I'm not going to say that. Um, he's just, he, he's got, like, hair that he doesn't really care about. And he's, like, smoking cigarettes. Like, like it looks like hand-rolled cigarettes, like, on air. And it's just, he's got, like, his background is just like a bookshelf with, like, 7,000 books on it. It's it's just, like, it's, it, it's like, uh, what's that song by, you don't know you're beautiful. Yeah, it's like, it's like that, but, like, in content creation form. He, like, doesn't understand how cool he actually looks on his on his videos and shit and he's just like i don't know what i'm doing mate you know some shit like that and i'm like damn this is fucking super swag my, my guy's dripping the only reason i brought it up is he hit me up today basically just started his youtube channel uh relatively recently he's asking me some questions about some shit and uh sorry i forgot i was on the fucking clock Man, everyone stinks right now. Everyone really stinks. Yo, I tell you what. Ah, see that that I I Lee Curtis, where are you going to land, man? All these guys stink. I'll just go Curtis Hamill cuz I don't know what the fuck else to do. So uh, all also guys, by the way, like don't judge my team. Judge judge me as a person. Judge me, okay? I'm a bad person. That's fine. I understand that. But don't judge my team. I'm never paying attention when this shit happens. It always goes off the rails. Once I hit like double digit rounds, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Um, Curtis Samuel, where's he going to land? It ain't going to be back with the Panthers. It might be with Wa they, he can go to Washington, but then what the fuck does he become? Ron Rivera is like 72. His, his creativity is on par with the fucking rock. He's not going to use Curtis Samuel the correct way. So that's going to be a problem. Some team's going to think about Curtis Samuel, what he did last year, and be like, we're going to use you the same way, but they ain't going to do it. They ain't finna about it. Do it. Uh, okay. So, oh, LaVisca Chenault is another guy, kind of like Curtis Samuel, where, like, people like LaVisca a lot. I do, too, like, as a prospect and what he brings to the field. I just I have this weird gut feeling that he's never going to live up to the, the fantasy upside of what he actually brings to a football field. Like, I don't think he's ever going to be a number one wide receiver. And, like, it's great that he gets rushes and shit, but, like, I don't give a fuck about three for 16 on the ground. Like, I'm sorry. It's cool that you could play quarterback and do some wildcat shit, but like, man, this makes me sound like I'm shit. I I own Lavisca in like a lot of my dynasty leagues, actually. But I'm just saying, like, I I, I am I am hesitant towards the guys like Curtis Samuel and Lavisca Chenault that like every time they make a flashy play because they're flashy fucking players, they get hyped up and like 
flashy plays are not consistent. Flashy plays are not what wins you fantasy games and championships. Skirt. What else do we got here? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start putting players in the queue. Do we need another quarterback? We should probably go with another quarterback. Eh. Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Baker. I don't hate Baker. I think Baker gives a really see the thing about the thing about these leagues is um I want to shoot for upside. I don't really care about floor. And I bring that up because I was thinking about taking Gus Edwards. If I didn't take J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards is gonna be one of my most targeted double digit round running backs in these best ball drafts. Did he go off? Yeah, 10 8. Nice pick, Gooey. Gooey subset. That's a pretty fucking swaggy name. Gooey subset. I wonder what the storage is behind that. Gooey subset. Um, I mean, Mark Ingram's gone, so Gus Edwards, and he's he's a restricted free agent, so he didn't technically re-sign with the Ravens yet, but I'd be shocked if he didn't. Gus Edwards is like really good behind that offensive line. And I I think he's gonna get like double digit touches almost every game next year. He's not going to have a huge ceiling, but if he takes half the goal line carries and gets like eight to ten carries a game, he could be a nice, a nice little secondary uh running back for you. Oh, oopsies. Where did you go? There you go. So um so you could be a nice little secondary running back for you, but in these situations where you're only starting two running backs and you're drafting like five or six of them, I don't want to pair Dobbins and Gus Edwards together because I'm not looking to I'm not looking for floor like you want to do floor in season long because it protects you because you actually have to choose who to start uh so if JK Dobbins goes down like you don't have another choice but in these you know you'll have another running back where the software automatically starts whoever it is like you don't have to worry about replacing him one for one or eye for an eye as um the great JK the great JK Rollins said who's the fucking lady that wrote Harry Potter Who's the short? Oh man, I'm all over the fucking place. What about the, who's the Phillies shortstop like ten years ago? J.J. Rollins or something like that? Or was it J.K. Rollins? J.K. Rowling? J.K. Rowling? Who wrote Harry Potter? Whoever wrote Harry Potter sh- fucking should have wrote the script for this mock draft because it's not fucking good. It's not looking good, boys. Uh, do we go with another tight end? Do we go with a quarterback? No, nah, there's a million quarterbacks. We can go with the tight end here. We're going to go with a dirt. Bop, deep, bop, boop. Da! Ah, it's not far off. I feel like this was like Facebook, Instagram advertising. Like they heard me say Hayden Hurst. And they're like, oh, next closest thing. What you would identify with, what you would find relevant is Hayden Hurst. Is Matt Ryan, the Atlanta Falcons quarterback. It's crazy as shit, you know? I used to... uh before doing all this content shit, actually, while I was starting to do content, that's what I used to do. I used to do Facebook and Instagram advertising for companies like the paid shit. So the sponsored posts and what most people don't understand is that Instagram and Facebook, the reason those platforms are so valuable, right? Like how's fa- how's Zuckerberg going to be worth like billions of dollars? He doesn't sell anything. You know what he sells? Information. He's got your information. And that's why advertising on those platforms is so fucking powerful because typically in the olden days, the olden days of like eight years ago before Facebook advertising became a the thing, um, it would be companies paying for commercials. And when you run a commercial, like sure, you could do it on a certain channel. You could do it in a certain geographic area, but like you're wasting a lot of, you know, there's a lot of fat to be trimmed there in terms of the number of people that are seeing it that are super irrelevant to your actual ad. And that's not the case with Facebook and Instagram advertising, right? They have all of this information about you. They track every single motherfucking click that you do on your computer. Oh boy. Satan Hurst is going to drop to me again. Are we going to get the elusive Matt Ryan and Hayden Hurst stack right now? Oh boy. Oh boy. Come to Papa. Who's even left on the board outside of these guys? Anyone good? Oh, man, I kind of like Gabriel Davis. I really like Rondell Moore. Oh, I just you know, I just hyped that up so much I can't not go with Hayden Hurst there. Let's fucking go. Hurst, I tell you, I tell you, his number's exactly the same as Austin Hooper's the year before Austin Hooper broke out in Atlanta. 
it's not going to happen because they brought in Arthur Smith and they're going to be a lot more run heavy first. So, uh, so this was probably dumb of me to take that pick, but, 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 but I'm look like a genius. If it does work out, what was I saying? Oh, advertise. Yeah. So got all your clicks measured down. They know what articles you read, what videos you watch, what groups and pages you're part of, what blogs you read. I think I already said that. So they know exactly what you're into. Okay. And when you advertise via these platforms, you get to choose different topics and different interests and behaviors and like economical backgrounds and and race and gender. And you get so ingrained, you get so um, granular with how you can target via Facebook and Instagram advertising that it seems like people are following you because they basically are following you on the internet. And since everybody's just on the internet 24 seven, virtually you're being followed. It's the same thing as being followed by fucking somebody in real life. But listen, you're on the internet 24 seven. There's no difference. It's just not a fucking actual physical person following you. You're getting followed on the internet. And the other thing is like a lot of the times when you guys sign up for like Facebook has partnerships with almost every app, like almost every mobile app. So they get your information from that as well. When you log onto an app, a lot of the times they'll ask for your permission to hear your microphone, right? Like you'll be like, oh, can I send you notifications? Can I get your location services? Can we hear your audio or whatever? And a lot of y'all just be like, yes, 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 yes. So it's a good chance that one of the apps on your phone has access to your microphone and that app likely has a partnership with Facebook. Therefore, yes, yes, they are fucking listening to you, people. They're listening to you and you don't actually give a fuck. Wouldn't you rather have ads and stuff and content be pushed out to you that's more relevant to you? Like, yes. People be just be comp- complaining for the sake of complaining nowadays. Like, oh, you put this product that I fucking love and bought and made my life better in front of me? How fucking dare you? I'd rather you try to sell me fucking PVs, PCP fucking pipes. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Everybody's a stupid and I'm the most stupid. I'm the more stupider. Don't you hate when a motherfucker don't text you back for like three hours? Like, I know you have your phone by you, near you, on you, next to you. Just answer me. Stop being difficult. Shaking my fucking head. All right. That was a marketing Thursday tip track trap tip tactic trick for you. Wasn't a trick. Nobody probably cares about that shit. Honestly, I would sit here and talk about marketing stuff all day if you guys wanted to hear that. I don't think anyone does. Who do we got going off here? Okay. Uh, Jeff Wilson at the 10. I don't hate Jeff Wilson. I think there's just a lot of uncertainty. Like, if the dust settles and they don't add anyone else to that backfield, Jeff Wilson is going to be an absolute steal in the 10th. Who else do we like here? Darnell Mooney is a fantastic pick in the 11th round. A little more luck. He ends up with probably like 250 more receiving yards last year. Denzel Mims. Fantastic pick in the 11th round. They have a new quarterback. He's going to be, I think he has the athleticism, the upside to be the number one there in New York very quickly. Zach Moss. No, I'm, I'm just done with the backfield in Buffalo. They don't run the ball enough. They don't run effectively. And I think there's a possibility that they do add some competition to that bike field. All right, we're done with wide receiver. We're done with tight ends and and uh, quarterbacks. Who do we like at any of these flex spots? Oh, I love Todd Gurley. That might have been the driest sarcasm literally of all time. Yeah, we're going to let this clock pick for us. Who did they take? You took a third fucking quarterback? When are you going to learn? I just talked about how smart Facebook and Instagram are, and we still got this dumb shit going on where your algorithm tells you to pick Derek Carr. At least give me Henry Ruggs. Whatever. Rondell Moore, love that. He's he's explosive and athletic enough to make a to make a uh, an impact immediately on the field. Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis. Ooh, interesting. Buffalo getting some respect put on their receivers there. I like Gabriel Davis more. I think he's got some real upside this year. It's like a poor man's Denzel Mims in a sense. Actually, almost like a rich man's Denzel Mims. If we actually look at the statistics, 
Philip Lindsay, really like him here. I think he gets re-signed in Denver and, you know, continues to play a secondary role, but still have, have his big upside games. Devin Singletary, no. Terry Cohen, absolutely fucking no. Higby, uh, Higby is kind of interesting, I guess, now with Stafford coming in. I'm not like one to try to dissect, be like, oh, this quarterback loves targeting the tight end or this coach loves it. More just like opportunity plus good quarterback tends to lead to opportunity or tends to lead to volume and fantasy production. So Stafford's obviously an upgrade from Jared Goff. Gerald Everett is out of there. Josh Reynolds is out of there. I think Tyler Higby could be a nice value play here in the 13th. Austin Hooper had a big, uh, a big kind of bounce back towards the end of the year. Uh, he got hurt in the middle of the year. He had that uh, appendectomy. I just completely made that up. I have no idea what he had. It might have been appendectomy, but that was the first thing that popped to my mind. And uh, he missed some games, came back, and then finally started uh, having some success down the down the line for the Browns last year. So I don't hate Austin Hooper. Damian Williams, extremely risky. I think if Damian Williams comes back, like he could force a 50-50 timeshare with Clyde, but um, there's also a chance that he just doesn't return to the NFL. So I'm not going to use a 13th round pick on that when you could have automatic production like the god Derek Carr. Troutman, nice pick there. Gurley, literally the worst pick I've ever seen in the history of fantasy football. Shepard's not too shabby, but they're going to they're gonna add a lot of offensive weapons to their team, I think, this offseason, whether it's two wide receivers or a wide receiver tight end. Let's see. Do we need more wide receivers? Yeah, we definitely do. So T.Y., Darius Slayton. I kind of like Slayton here, man. I like, uh, I like taking these high upside guys where Slayton can be uh, a game breaker on any given week. You're looking for guys who, who you know, fit the top 15 or top 10 weekly outcomes. You're looking for guys who can have three or four of those in a given year this late in the draft and can crack your starting lineup in best ball, right? So we're going to end up drafting seven wide receivers. All we need is three of them to have big weeks. And Slayton's going to be a guy that you can kind of toss in and and turn there and, and mold into a, a top three guy out of your team. And Slayton's a guy, a big play guy, big, big, big play guy. So him and John Brown, I think John Brown's going to be out of there. I'm pretty sure his contract's done in Buffalo. If he ain't in Buffalo, I'm not really looking to sign 32-year-old John Brown. Do you know? Who's your favorite? Who? Let me ask you right here, actually, since y'all are in the crowd and I can ask you to answer questions for me. Drop a comment down below. Of these speedsters right here, who do you like most for 2021 fantasy football? Just straight up redraft. All values the same. They're all getting picked right next to each other. Henry Ruggs, Miko Hardman, Darius Slayton, John Brown. I'll probably take Slayton. I could see the argument for, I mean, Ruggs second year, but I don't see the argument for him at all. Miko Hardman, I could see the argument because Sammy Watkins is probably going to be gone. Um, I want to say Demarcus Robinson might be gone too. So he has a path to more playing time. I still think Slayton's probably the top pick here. John Brown, if he if he is back in Buffalo, I would obviously take him over these guys most likely. But I, I don't, I, I want to say he is not. Let me see, actually. Let's see. You could always check people's contracts on Spotrack, S-P-O-T-R-A-C. Let's see, John Brown. What a, like, a ridiculous name. Just John Brown. I'd be so pissed. 2021. Okay, so he's actually signed through this year. So I've been lying. So I guess John Brown's not the worst pick. Let's see. Alexander Madison, Gronk. That's a great fucking pick. Gronk. Ah, Gronk. I've been saying the same thing for the last two months. I think Tampa Bay just brings everybody back. And they run it back again. And Gronk is obviously one of those pieces. He's a free agent. Um, yeah, that's that. Good talk. Alexander Madison, Colt Komet, Daniel Jones, Ty Johnson, Daryl Henderson. Uh, Komet's a, a, an interesting late-round guy. Really, like, we need to know what they're doing at quarterback there, man. We really do. Kind of hope they get one of the veterans. I mean, they just tagged Allen Robinson, so I think that could be a uh, a thing they they could still tag him and then trade him right they could still trade him off um i think obviously tagging Allen robinson gives much more allure to any quarterback wanting to get out of their current situation move to a new team i.e deshaun watson i.e the rumors of the russell wilson to chicago i don't know if those have any fucking actual legs to them but obviously having Allen robinson there would be a big uh drawing factor plus they have the stellar defense so um Things will be interesting in Chicago. Terrace Marshall, really high upside wide receiver. He's always played with absolute studs at LSU. Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And this year he played with uh, someone else too. That's, that was like literally the number one wide receiver prospect in the country. So he's had a lot of competition, but I think he's got a lot of upside at the next level. Anyone I like here? Brian Edwards, another guy in Las Vegas who I think 
could have some upside. Could have could have a big year. He's someone that everyone loved coming out of South Carolina. Really broke out at like a 17 year old. Ooh, what do we got here? Jacoby Alzard. Oh, it's ugly at wide receiver. It got ugly quick. Does Nelson Aguilar sign with Las Vegas again? Man, I don't know. Someone's gonna give him money though. I, I kind of like Nelson, man. I'm glad he he worked he worked all the way bike from his his down his down year. He got made fun of all over the internet. He just got fucking bullied. It feels like me. Um, it feels like me just getting bullied on the internet left and right because I can't catch. I have great fucking hands. I would say one of my strongest attributes in as a human being is my hand eye coordination. It's fucking fantastic. I'll catch anything. I got the stickiest fingers south of. I'm not gonna finish that joke. I keep it PG for y'all. I'm a, I'm a parental guidance for a lot of y'all. Y'all call me father all the time, and I I'm starting to appreciate it, guys. I want to let you know, especially you, Daniel. I know Daniel, you're you're one of the you're one of my sons. You're one of my grandsons. Just blaze. Gotta stay hydrated. T minus one hour till kickoff till fucking Taco Tuesday, baby. Having a oh, I'm excited, dude. The energy's so fucking unreal here. If you ever want to follow, like, just saying, this is not like I, what? Shut up. If you ever want to follow, like, what's going on in my life behind the scenes, obviously you can follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE. But if you want a more visual sense, if you want to see the margaritas and the tacos, Instagram would probably be the place to be. It's just my full name, so my YouTube channel at Nick Ercolano, no spaces or nothing. You can follow me there if you're looking for delicious margaritas. Oh, boy, I'm excited for tonight. Benny Snell. I've been saying this, too. I really like the Pittsburgh uh, the Pittsburgh running backs as best ball picks. Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane. Because I do not think they, they retain James Conner, and I think the two of them create a backfield split. I could sound like a fucking dumbass in uh, two months when they when they draft Javante Williams. Ooh, Donald Parham was a nice pick by just just Rays. Have I been saying it wrong? Is it, it was it never just Blaze, or is there two of them at the same time? Anthony McFarland, come here, you little little you little snack, you. I just saw what I wanted to see, didn't I? It was never just Blaze. It was just just Trays. Just Trays. That's pretty good. Fucking play on words there. Just Trays. Um, okay, so Benny Snell, Anthony McFarland. Yeah, I just, I, y'all know I really like Anthony McFarland from last year. Thought he was a fantastic player at Maryland. 4-4, four, 4-4 four, four, four guy. Uh, surprisingly good size. He played great for Pittsburgh when they actually let him carry the ball last year, I thought. So I think he, he gets a bigger role this year. Where's Jameis going to go? Since you guys asked. I don't know. He's somehow going to end up back in New Orleans. Makes no sense financially. The Saints have just been cutting motherfuckers left and right, and they're still like sixty-two million now, nah, like forty million dollars under the cap right now. Uh, but still, a lot of moves, obviously, to go. Justin Jackson, I don't know. I don't know about that gooey subset. Honestly, stick to stick to names, stick to profile names. Marlin Mack. I got to do these live from now on and figure out like a do like a vote button where you guys can make my pick the next pick for me. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I should definitely do these live. You know what the problem is, actually, because underdog doesn't have the invite button yet. Like I have to take a picture of the draft I'm in and send it out and then it takes a little while to fill up. So I can't like time out when I'm going live for you guys. It's third world type problems. I know. I know. I feel bad for me too if I were you. <laughs> but any questions, you can always drop them down in the comments. And make sure you hit the thumbs up button anytime you're down there. Anytime you're in the, in the southern hemisphere area of the YouTube section, just give your favorite creators a thumbs up, man. Not even on a me, a personal level, but like I just know how much time goes into creating content. And I respect all content creators except the ones that are fucking terrible. I don't respect them. So give me a thumbs up. And of course, download the Underdog app, please. Do yourselves a favor. It's the, it's the most fun platform to draft on. It's quick. 
It's aesthetic. It's simple. You could join. You could do slow drafts as well. They got different league sizes, which is crazy. They got anything from like three, six, 12 team leagues. So you can do a quick one of like three and just get a stacked ass team. They also have buy-ins of three, five, 10, 50, 100, $1,000 buy-ins. They have a great fucking pick em game. If you like other sports, their pick em game is smooth as shit. It's actually really, really fun. I'm going to show you guys it afterwards. So you can, you know, honestly put $10 in there with the promo code BDG and go play some pick em. They don't even have to draft if you don't want. She, she, you could just watch me draft. She. Take me home tonight. I don't want to. Can we see the light? Honestly, if I could have one talent that I didn't have, it would definitely be singing. If I was a good singer, I feel like I would be a, U- a YouTube singer. Like, that's what I would do. I'd be one of those corny ass dudes that, like, covered corny songs and probably just got, like, super popular that way. I wouldn't have gotten popular, but, like, I would have tried miserably. Van Jeff, does he get a spot? Ooh, Van Jeff. What happens with Vanny Jeff this year with uh, with Stafford coming in? Duke Johnson was cut. He might Duke Johnson's gonna end up going to Philly. Someone's just gonna ruin the backfield for I mean, Miles Sanders ruined the backfield for himself, but that's neither here nor here. Uh you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna diversify and get this is probably the only time we'll ever draft Van Jefferson in these drafts. But since Reynolds and Everett are both out and Stafford's coming in, I mean the the opportunity's there for Mr. Van. I'll tell you what, I heard he ran a great route at senior camp last year. At the, at the senior bowl, I heard he ran a great route. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I got to figure out what train I got to take. I think I got to take the B or the D downtown. I think it's in the West Village or Greenwich Village or some shit. Speaking of, so the HQ, the HQ uh, studio lease is up at the end of April so like in a month and a half and I have to decide what I want to do I could renew this lease but I really want to move downtown because just life in general in New York downtown is really fucking fun and things are about to open up in the spring and it should be a wild spring summer but animals animals pitching me on uh on getting a place in New Jersey because the overall here here's the thing my goal for this for the HQ and big dogs in general, I would like to make this place into obviously like a studio for us, but like a creative studio in general. So we need a lot of space in order to do that. But like, I want to do that in New York city because it's my favorite. I want to do my favorite thing in the world in my favorite place in the world. So it's one of those things where like, I want to make it, but I want to make it on my own terms. Unfortunately, in order to have a really spacious place in New York city, you have to have a insane amount of money. Um, And we're not there yet where I can get something comfortable enough to have, you know, four or five people really working and sometimes sleeping there as like a studio. So they're trying to get me to move back to New Jersey just for a year. We want to do like, well, he wants to do like a one year sprint, a one year sprint where we rent because the money I pay here, we can get a ridiculous place in New Jersey and really use it as a, a whole whole ass creative studio. Let me make my last pick and I'll finish up my terrible fucking story. Yeah, we'll go Duke. We'll hope he signs somewhere. I don't give a shit. Um, for that kind of money, we can get a crazy place in New Jersey. But like, I don't really want to live in New Jersey. So I have to decide, do I do what's best for me personally? Or do I do what's best for the brand to help us grow? Because I think if we're together and we have a big place like that where we can make content like 24-7... Um, you know, we'll make some magic, but like, I don't know if I'm willing to sacrifice that and maybe it's selfish, but like I'm the motherfucker that started this. And like, I started it just to kind of supplement my life, you know? Um, so like ultimately it is my choice, of course, but kind of stuck in a conundrum there. I don't really know what I want to do. Well, that's my venting and that is this draft. So Thank you all for hanging out this long. If you did, that's why I put it at the end because I know no one's fucking listening or watching by this point. If you are, drop a comment. Let me know you stayed. That'd be cool as shit. I don't imagine a lot of you did, but if you did, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow on Fade the Public where we are doing a free agency preview. So stick around for that. Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing tons of Dynasty, Rookie, and just season-long fantasy content for the remainder of our lives. 
and going forward into the afterlife. I'm about to go forward into the afterlife tonight with the amount of margs I'm about to suck down. I love y'all. I'm out. Goodbye.